brought to you by the Michigan Municipal League. It seems like every year we hear a lot of government officials and politicians talking about revenue sharing. But what does that really mean? And how does it affect us in our daily lives? The Michigan Constitution guarantees our local communities will receive state funding to help pay for core government services, such as police protection, fire services, roads, water, sewer, and garbage collection services. This is known as revenue sharing between the state and local units of government. According to data from the State Department of Treasury, in 2004 revenue sharing accounted for approximately 25 percent of a municipality's budget. Making reductions to one quarter of annual budget has a significant impact on every city and village. How did it get this way? Revenue sharing started in the 1920s when the state of Michigan promised municipalities it would streamline tax collection for the local jurisdiction by eliminating local taxes and replace them with state taxes. The state would collect and record these taxes and in return the state would reimburse the local jurisdiction to offset the general budgets of local communities. Well, the way revenue sharing actually works is the state levies taxes statewide, basically the sales tax, and then they take that total amount of revenue and they're supposed to distribute it back to cities based on a formula. A part of the formula deals with the population of a city. Other parts of the formula depend upon the needs of the city. Through 2006, the formula calls for 21.3% of the first 4% of the sales tax. But the governor and state legislature have the ability to adjust this amount, which they have done to the detriment of local services over the past five years. When the state budget gets tight, it's often balanced over the backs of local services. The more reductions in revenue sharing that occur, the more pressure on local communities to keep providing core services without raising taxes. In fact, in every state budget since 2000, the state has not fully returned state sales taxes as required by state statute. When the legislature promises an increase and then for whatever reason is not able to follow through with that, um, that that's, that's, that's awful. We budget for that increase, whatever it is, that it directly impacts us. Statutory revenue sharing payments to local governments in 2006 were supposed to be $1 billion. Instead, only $407 million was distributed. Over the past four years, statutory revenue sharing has been cut by $2 billion, and local services all across Michigan have been negatively affected. What essentially has happened is the state has not been sharing what it's been, been collecting on a proportionate basis. They've been actually cutting the revenue that goes to cities for local government services much more than they've cut their own budget. The impacts of state revenue sharing cuts are far-reaching. A 2005 Michigan Municipal League survey found cuts in revenue sharing have negatively impacted communities across Michigan. Projects such as street repair, sewer and water improvements have been postponed. Recreation and library programs have been curtailed or eliminated. We're estimating that we would lose about nine million dollars annually in income. That's a serious amount. That's, you know, 40 police officers, it's 12 firefighters, it's the parks in my neighborhood having the hedges trimmed, it's children having safe and supervised playgrounds in the summertime. And all of those things are the things that the citizens tell us time after time are the things that make the quality of life that they want in a city. In Farmington Hills proper, we've lost five firefighters and five police officers because we haven't been able to fund those programs effectively, relying on our share of the revenue sharing dollars that have been promised to us historically. If Slane Police and Fire Dispatcher, Georgie, how may I help you? Explaining to a person that they had to wait two hours uh, when they dialed 911 for an emergency call before a police officer was able to arrive to their door because we don't have the additional funding to fund enough police officers to police the streets. It's very difficult. According to the Michigan Commission on Law Enforcement Standards, there are nearly 1,600 fewer police officers on the streets of Michigan since the tragedy of September 11, 2001. The number of police agencies has declined as well. 
Similarly, the State Fire Marshal's Office reports 400 fewer firefighters since 2003. Public safety is in jeopardy. Police and fire services aren't the only essential government services affected when the state legislature cuts revenue sharing. City reserves and rainy day funds have been spent down or depleted, leaving some cities at risk of financial disaster. Senior and recreation programs have been eliminated or halted. The things that people are most likely to see as the responsibility of their government are the things that get short shrift when there isn't enough revenue to go around. It's why it's so important that we make sure that our legislature understands that it's about maintenance of municipal buildings, it's about cops and firemen, and it's also about cutting grass in our parks. It's that simple and that complicated. It covers the gamut of people's lives. As we've seen today, services provided by local government, services we sometimes take for granted, are dramatically affected by state funding levels. It's important for residents to understand how cities and villages, large and small, are affected by the cuts state elected officials make. The Michigan Municipal League shares your concerns of the detrimental impacts of reduced revenue sharing and is dedicated to preserving cities and villages' high quality of life. We encourage you to contact your local community and state legislators to get more involved with this issue.